Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, David. Hi. I would like just. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. I, I would like to ask uh, just a few questions. Sure. Uh, the first is like, uh, where does the uh, inspiration come from? Well, the, well, obviously, I, I, I believe the, the Holy Spirit has given us the inspiration, but that I don't know if that's, hopefully. But the whole point of our band is to bring Jesus to people that would never come to a church. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 1 through 5, that he preached Christ and him crucified so that people would not be convinced by human wisdom, but by God's power. And so what we're trying to do is show the, the power of the cross. And we're trying to show it in using modern symbols. So the first half of the show is just craziness. And then it turns into a story of, of a girl and how she's destroyed by the lies of the world because that's the reality of so many people and how Jesus is the answer to that destruction. And so that, that's the inspiration. And one of the things that we're always asking God for is how can we lift up the cross in a more powerful way, in a stronger way? All right, all right. Uh, the next question is um, the, strangest, the strangest place uh, that you, you have played. The strangest place? <laughs> well, we've played in a lot of interesting places. Um, well, one would be a, a, a club that was run by uh, a guy who ran male strip there's a male strip club in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the owner of the club, his name was Boy, that's what he called himself, and he was like 45 years old, he wore army fatigues, and he looked kind of like Danny DeVito. <laughs> He's a pretty scary individual. Oh, right. But we, there was a runway down the, uh, in this club, and where the male strippers were, but instead our band played there, and then um, we were looking for a place to have a follow-up, and he said, use my club. And so all these people came from the different shows that wanted to know more about Jesus. And they came to, the, to his club, the Tribe House. And, and again, instead of where the strippers were, our band was playing worship music. And there was a guy down in his office, and it was his job to organize strippers. And he said he was down in his office, and he heard this music. And he said, when I heard your music, a power came into my office, and the mirror on the wall exploded. And it was like I, she took me down there and it was like a bomb had gone off. Wow. Literally, it was like there's an explosion. And he said, it's not just the glass that is breaking, but something is breaking inside of me. And this tough guy covered in tattoos wept like a baby because he felt the power of God. I mean, so, I mean, that was one of the crazy places that we've, we've been. I would say another one was, uh, well, there's been many, but um, when we were in Southeast Turkey, we were in a, in a, in a, uh, a place called Samandag, where the gospel had, had not been proclaimed publicly for more than a thousand years. And there was no Christians there. And uh, before the show, someone att attacked me with a knife. It was a pretty scary place. But uh, we, got, we saw God move powerfully, and, and several hundred people prayed out loud in the square, which is missionaries there said it was, it was a miracle, but it was really tough. You know, it, was, it wasn't easy. Um, I mean, I could give lots of examples, but those are a couple. That's amazing. Um, and uh, what w would you say to the people uh, who are offended of your music? Well, Jesus always communicated in the language of the people that he was trying to reach. You know, when he talked to fishermen, he'd say, I'm going to make you fishers of men. When he talked to shepherds, he'd say, I'm the good shepherd. So if Jesus came... Uh, to the people in the scene, he would communicate in their language. He didn't speak in some foreign uh, religious ghetto language, but he, sp he spoke in the common language of the people, and in that language he explained the kingdom of God. And Jesus said the way you should test something is by its fruit. And so I can tell you that we've seen thousands and thousands of people that would never step foot in a church give their life to Jesus. And uh, one, it actually, um, one time I was in, in Siberia, and we were getting ready to play, and there's really a demonic band on the stage, and so I thought I can't be, I just, it was too heavy, so I thought I'll go backstage, and I couldn't go backstage because they were playing pornography, you know, there, and all these guys, it was just crazy bad thing in the backstage. So I just kind of went in the hallway, and I was just kind of, I was sitting in the hallway, and I just felt this oppression, and I said, God, I need you to encourage me. And so I opened the Bible and I turned to the passage where David was looking for a sword. 
And he went to the priest, and the priest said, there's the so only sword I have is the one from Goliath. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's, there's no better sword than this. And he handed it to David. And as I was reading that, I felt like God said to me, I'm giving you a sword that has been used to destroy many people. I'm going to hand you that sword, and I want you to use it to bring people to Jesus. Wow. And so that's why I know what we're doing is right. Okay. All right. And um, the last question is, uh, the biggest sin of church today? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to be the big judge. You know, I don't, I'm not the big judge of, the, of you know... Because any sin that the church commits, I'm, I'm the church, you know. But I think we, including myself, we become too isolated from, from people who don't know God. You know, Jesus was a friend of sinners. And a friend isn't just someone you try to evangelize. A friend is someone that you let into your home. And I feel like the biggest sin I commit is that I don't, I don't have friends who are just outside of the church like I should. And I heard about this pastor, and he wanted to see revival in his church. He was trying all the different techniques and everything. And he felt like God said to him, close down your church for a while and have your congregation invite their neighbors in for breakfast. You know, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. hey, come have breakfast with us. You know, not being weird, you know, playing praise music really loud and just friendship. Mm -hmm. And he saw revival in his church. Because most people today, they're just so lonely, and they're so isolated. You know, their best friend is their television or something. And, mm -hmm. and I think that if we would open our homes and just be friends with people, and then out of that friendship, they, they'll go, What's, who are you? And you tell them the truth. You tell them who Jesus is and what he, did, what he did for us and what he can do for them. And I think that's the greatest sin that I commit sometimes is I get too much in my Christian ghetto. So thank you so much. I really appreciate and uh, have a good time in Poland. Thank you. Thank you. Dziękujemy.